in the previous lecture we had discussed about the transverse shear and we had somehow tried to understand what we actually mean by transverse shear in the beams so we know now as far as the beams are concerned at any section of the beam we have the transverse shear stress and we have the longitudinal shear stress now we have to you know we need some quantization formulas we need some formula by which we can calculate the magnitude of the shear force so the formula see we already have one formula that that's what we call as the uh, the fluctural formula which we have discussed last time which we had derived last time in case of beams subjected to pure bending though that formula can be applied to beams which are not subjected to pure bending which are subjected to other sorts of loading conditions as well and you know this fluctural formula is used for the calculation of this is used for the calculation of the normal stress in the beams and we know stress normal stress at any cross section of the beam is equal to minus my divided by i where i is the bending moment at that very section y is the distance from the neutral axis to the point where we want to measure the normal stress and i is the moment of inertia of the cross section of the beam about the neutral axis now uh, as far as the uh, as far as this formula is concerned the shear formula is concerned the shear formula is used for the calculation of the shear stresses generated in the beams that is this transverse shear okay transverse shear as well as the longitudinal shear because we have discussed in the previous class that transverse shear is equal to the longitudinal shear through a property what we have called there as the complementary property of the shear stress that longitudinal shear stresses longitudinal shear stress is equal to the transverse shear stress so the shear formula is very very important formula this formula will help us in the calculation of this transverse shear stress in the beams so how this analysis begins as far as the overall analysis is concerned it starts with let's suppose we have a beam let's suppose we have a beam and this beam is subjected to a distribution of load okay the load is distributed such that the intensity of the load is w as a function of x okay it is subject to different types of loads it is subjected to concentrated loads as well as it's subjected to bending moments m1 and m2 so we are having a beam which is simply supported beam and this beam is subjected to different types of loads now we know on account of different types of loads on this beam any cross section of the beam at any cross section of the beam we will be having normal stresses which we calculate with the help of fluctural formula okay and as far as this beam is concerned let's take a small element out of this beam that is from the fixed from this end from one of the end of the beam let's go to a distance x okay let's take out a small element of the beam whose thickness is dx let's take this dx out okay let's take out this dx this is our small beam element having thickness dx now this beam will have its own neutral axis let's say this is the neutral axis of this beam okay this is the neutral axis of this beam now this is a cross section of the beam the thickness of this section is dx and this is the neutral axis of this beam now let's go let's move since this is our x axis and this is our y axis this is our y axis let's go to a distance y prime along the neutral axis let's go let's move upwards from the neutral axis to a distance equal to y prime okay so this is the y prime and draw a small section out here take a small sectional plane there draw a sectional plane that's what has been drawn here draw a small sectional plane okay as far as this sectional plane is concerned this sectional plane divides our overall cross section the total cross section has been divided by this sectional plane into two parts one area is one area is the area which is above this another area is the area which is below this so we are having the area which is below that is this entire area and we are having the area which is above the sectional plane that is this area okay so what we have done we have moved a distance y prime from the neutral axis at that distance we are drawing a sectional plane and as far as this sectional plane is concerned 
on this sectional plane this sectional plane divides this total area into two areas one is the area about the section above the sectional plane we call that as a prime and another is the area below the sectional plane that will be a the total area minus a prime okay we'll be focusing our attention we'll be doing our an analysis on the area which is above the sectional plane that is whose area is a prime now see as far as this total area is concerned this is the neutral axis okay this was your this is our x axis okay take this area out as we have taken this area out we know above the neutral axis there will be the compressive stresses that is compressive forces and below the neutral axis there will be the uh, the tensile forces and the tensile stresses tensile stresses and the tensile forces how do we know this because we have already derived that sigma is equal to minus my divided by i we know this so once we are taking a section once we are taking a section out as we have taken a section here as we have taken a section here now on this section the section which we are taking this section is having left hand portion and the right hand portion so this section is now here we are taking this section here so as we move from one point of one end of the section to another end of the section definitely the bending moment will change okay because this beam is subject to a varying load conditions we are having distrib uh, sorry non uniformly distributed load we are having concentrated load we are having moments so let's suppose the moment on one side of the beam is m therefore and once we move from the left hand side of this section to the right hand side let's suppose the moment changes by dm so on the left hand side if the moment is m on the right hand side the moment will be m plus dm okay now look at look on the left hand side okay the moment acting on this very face of this cross section is equal to m therefore the value of this uh, normal stress will be equal to my divided by i m is the bending moment on the left hand side y is the distance from the neutral axis i is the moment of inertia okay we know as we measure a distance above the neutral axis y is negative therefore as y is negative minus minus sigma becomes positive that is it is a sigma becomes positive and if you multiply this sigma by the cross sectional area how much is the area of cross section that is this total area if you multiply this by cross sectional area that gives you the force this is equal to force so sigma into a is the force so above the neutral axis the force is in this direction which is compressive force okay the force is above the neutral axis since y is our y is negative okay our y is positive so this y and y uh, this sorry y is negative about y is positive about the neutral axis this force becomes this force is this force is negative okay this force is negative since as far as the moment is concerned the moment we are taking clockwise the moment is clockwise which is negative minus minus becomes so the total force will be positive okay so we know now as far as the force is concerned about the neutral axis with the help of the fluctural formula we know as far as this force is concerned this force will be in the positive direction like this okay this force will be like this at the neutral axis the force is zero as we go from the neutral axis towards the top portion the value of the force keeps on increasing okay as on this very face as we are below the neutral axis okay the force the, as you are uh, now use the same formula as we are below the neutral axis y is negative so minus minus becomes plus but as far as sigma is concerned m is concerned m is minus therefore the total force sigma into a will be minus that's what has been drawn along minus x axis okay so this is how the force will be this is what we have in fact done in the previous classes as well this is how the force yeah, represents how the force distribution is drawn how the force looks at on the left hand face of this area now on the right hand face it will be reverse of this okay so if you use the same formula for the force distribution on the right hand side the formula will be sigma is equal to my divided by i but we have m equal to m plus dm divided by i multiplied by y okay so the since we have here we have m we have m plus dm so here the moment on the right hand side is slightly greater than the moment on the left hand side therefore the value of the force on the right hand side will be slightly greater than the value of the force on the left hand side of it again using the fluctural formula we know how to plot these forces so look the overall balance above the neutral axis the forces are trying to compress this element and below the neutral axis the forces are trying to cause extension or 
create tensile forces in this in this in the section okay so about the neutral axis the forces are compressive in nature and below the neutral axis the forces are tensile nature in nature okay so what we have we have as we have as we have as we have drawn as we have extracted this section out out of this as we have drawn or extracted this section out and done the force balance using the fluctural formula the force on the top portion on the left hand side is distributed like this the force on the right hand portion at the above the neutral axis is distributed like this okay now we know if this area is symmetric above the neutral axis then if the force here is df what it has been written as df double prime the force here is df prime because the moment on the left hand side is different than the moment on the right hand side therefore for the force on the right hand and left hand side will be different look here whatever force you have here the force here will be same the reason being this is the neutral axis and we if we assume the area is symmetric about the neutral axis then the force distribution on the bottom side will be same as the force distribution on the uh, at the top side now look here uh, this is again df prime same as this df because this neutral axis is a symmetric axis axis of symmetry in our case so this is how this this is how the forces are being represented on the areas of cross section using the using fluctural formula this is what we have already done this is what has been done in the previous classes fluctural formula and drawing the normal stresses on it so as far as this beam is concerned as far as this beam is concerned take a section out of this beam the left hand and the right hand sections will be under the normal stress and the normal stress will be obtained with the help of fluctural formula multiply stress with the areas you will get the forces to which this section will be subjected now we have already discussed that uh, apart from these normal stresses acting on it if you look at the sectional plane this sectional plane will the area of the sectional plane is equal to the sectional plane is more or less like a rectangle its area is its area of the sectional plane will be thickness that is t multiplied by dx so t dx is the area of this sectional plane okay don't confuse the area of the sectional plane with the, with this area a prime a prime is this area which is the area of this cross section above y prime okay but this t dx represents the area of the sectional plane okay now as far as the area of the sectional this sectional plane is concerned this sectional plane is the plane which apart from this this cross section a prime will be subjected to the normal stresses or normal forces given by this di direction given by this diagram apart from this at this sectional plane we will be having what are called the shear stresses what you call as the longitudinal shear stresses we will be having the longitudinal shear stresses because we have discussed in the previous case the concept of the longitudinal shear stresses the concept of the longitudinal shear stresses we have discussed here it's here okay so as far as the uh, as far as the longitudinal shear stresses are concerned on this on the front face apart from the normal stresses we will be having on this very face we will be having the shear stresses what are called the longitudinal shear longitudinal shear stresses so this is as we are taking now this area into consideration on this area we are having the normal stresses which are given like this normal forces as well as we'll be having the shear force or the shear stress on this very on this very plane okay so now do one thing let's do the force balance force balance means that what type of forces now let's let's take this so as far as this area is concerned as far as this a prime area is concerned let's do our analysis on this a prime on the right hand side of this a prime we say the on the right hand side of this you have the normal stress value is say for example uh, say for, for example sigma prime and on its right hand side the normal stress value is sigma okay on the the value of sigma is varying from the left hand side to the right hand side because by the fluctural formula stress is equal normal stress is equal minus my divided by i since as we go from this section to this section the value of m changes therefore the value of sigma will also change therefore if we say the value of stress normal stress here is sigma the value of uh, normal stress here has to be the value of normal stress which will be inwards compressive because it's above the neutral axis the value of this normal stress has to be sigma prime we say at 
the value of normal stress here is say for example sigma prime and the value of normal stress on the left hand side of the section is say for example sigma now how this is the normal stress on this section okay now as far as this uh, section is concerned the normal stress is sigma prime it is very very important concept that is we are taking a small take a small area element out here whose area is small small area element we are doing our analysis be careful on this area uh, a prime we are here in this a prime we're taking a small area element out here whose area is d a prime okay and we say at this very point the value of stress is say for example sigma prime how much will be the force the force will be sigma prime d a okay the compressive force at this very point will be sigma prime d a that's what has been written here and this force is compressive in nature this is sigma prime d a how much will be the total force because of the stress distribution normal stress distribution on this area that will be integration sigma prime d a represents the stress at a point at on or a stress on a very very small area element therefore the total stress on the total area of this element on the on the on the total area a prime is equal to sigma prime d a and we are performing this integration but this integration is to be performed over the area a prime only because we are doing our analysis for this a prime area only now sigma prime sigma prime d a represents the compressive stress total compressive stress on this area element and this compressive stress is in this direction okay so if you are treating this to be your positive x axis therefore this is our negative x axis but look here this says the direction which is the force which has been measured on the left hand side is to be taken as positive the force which we are measuring this force sigma prime d a exists in this direction which is minus x axis therefore we have to take this by this sign convention we'll be taking this as positive okay no problem with this now go to the left hand plane on the left hand uh, on the left hand plane the stress is sigma the small area element take a small area element d a prime this will be the force the same analysis as we did on the right right hand plane so the force on the left hand side of this section will be sigma d a not sigma prime d a okay sigma but th and this and the same area on the this area of the section is same as the area of the section on the left hand side okay this is one and there is one more force acting on so this is the force on the right hand side this is the force on the left hand side and as far as this force is concerned we know as far as the shear stress is concerned let the shear stress on this plane at every point be equal to tau okay the shear stress value every shear stress here is equal to tau okay therefore how much will be the force longitudinal force because of this longitudinal shear stress that will be tau multiplied by area that is t into dx that's what we are doing tau multiplied by t into dx okay as far as this tau multiplied by t into dx is concerned this represents the shear force okay and let's say this shear force is acting in this direction okay since we know the normal stress in this direction is more than the normal stress in this direction therefore the overall force this section will try to move this section in the forward direction therefore here the stress will essentially on this plane will be in this direction uh, the, on, on the uh, topmost plane the shear stress will be in the di in this direction this plane that is the uppermost section will try to move since you have normal stress and the normal force on this side is more because of m plus dm more bending moment on this side this section will be it, it, the normal force will try to move this section in this direction therefore the normal the shear stress will be created in the opposite direction as a reaction force that's why it has been written as mines okay so since this beam this beam is we do not have this beam is subject to force and there is no force acting along x axis okay when there is no force acting along x axis therefore summation of all these forces has to be equal summation of all these forces has to be equal to zero okay now we know as far as sigma prime is concerned sigma prime is the shear stress on the right hand side it is m plus dm divided by i by fluctual formula m plus dm by i into y and you have your da prime then minus sigma is equal to m by i into y into da prime and you have your tau dx as we perform the algebraic calculations as we perform the algebraic calculations m by i into y da prime m by y into da prime this and this term cancels so we are left with integral we are left with dm by i integral y da because dm is finite 
okay so it will be taken out of integration i is also finite it's out of integration so you have integral y da is equal to tau t dx okay so once you perform once you perform algebraic calculations we will get this so from this formula take t dx on the left hand side we will get tau is equal dm by dx that is here dm by dx and we have uh, this is 1 by uh, 1 by it that's 1 by it uh, it will be equal to tau okay so the value of the tau the value of the shear stress will be equal to this much so this is the value of the shear stress okay therefore the value of the shear stress is obtained by this formula okay this formula is a very very important formula what what is i i is the moment of inertia of this area i is the moment of inertia of this area about i is the moment of inertia from this formula look at this i i is the moment of inertia i is the moment of inertia of this of this uh, what you call as uh, uh, moment of inertia of this area about the neutral axis as far as t is concerned t is the thickness of this element as far as dm is concerned it is the dm by dx now you see it's dm by dx it is the gradient of the bending moment dm by dx and we know from the previous formula dm by dx is equal to v okay and as far as this y da is concerned this in, this is very very important parameter to understand so if we are asked which formula we use for the calculation of the shear stress by using the force balance the formula that we have we have tau is equal to 1 by it dm by dx integral y da so now as far as dm by dx is concerned we know dm by dx dm by dx is equal to v so this formula can also be written as this formula can also be written as tau is equal to 1 by it multiplied by dm by dx is v so this is v here integral y da uh, y da prime now tell me about look at this y da prime now let's see what does this y da prime mean as far as this y da prime is concerned y da prime can be written as as far as this y da prime is concerned this y this is y da prime as far as y and da prime is concerned this y da prime has something to do with the centroid of this area that's what has been written this is uh, we have obtained as uh, we have obtained it uh, as uh, uh, look at look here now uh, as we are talking about this y da prime let's understand it the way we have already understood from uh, you know concept of centroid from the engineering mechanics concept we have the small area okay let's suppose the centroid of the small area this small area whose area is a prime it will have centroid somewhere okay let's suppose the y coordinate of that centroid is the y coordinate of that centroid is say for example y prime bar okay let's call that as y prime bar we know as far as the y coordinate of the centroid is concerned the y coordinate of the centroid is given by it, we have to find the y coordinate of the centroid so in order to find the y coordinate of the centroid we look at small area element we look at a small area element and say let's suppose the centroid of that small area element that small area element the centroid of that very small element is at a distance y from the neutral axis okay we have to find be careful we have to find the centroid of the small area element we have to find the centroid of area a prime in order to find the centroid of area a prime we locate a small area whose area is say for example whose area is d a prime okay and let's suppose the centroid of the small area element is at a distance y from the neutral axis therefore what will be the y coordinate of the centroid of this area a prime that will be y prime equal to integral y 
da prime area is not to be taken over the entire area but this area because we are finding the centroid of the area a prime so this will be a prime divided by integral da prime this is how we define the centroid integral da prime is equal to a prime therefore we write therefore integral over small over area a prime y da prime is equal to y prime bar a prime what is y prime bar y prime bar is the y coordinate of the centroid of this area a prime be careful about it y prime is the centroid of the area a prime as measured from the neutral axis and a prime is its area that's what we'll be doing here as far as uh, what we do here is same so in place of this so in place of this so in place of this y prime y da we can directly write it represents the y coordinate of the centroid of the area a prime multiplied by the area a prime that's what has been done here therefore this y prime a prime this is what you also call as the first moment of inertia which is represented by q so the total so the total formula overall formula we represent now we will obtain is the total formula or the oral formula we will obtain is now tau is equal tau is equal to 1 by i into t dm by dx is equal to shear force that is v and y da prime by a prime is equal to q so the formula is vq divided by i t and this formula is what you call as shear flow formula sorry this formula is called the this is the formula that's called the shear formula okay so this formula tau is equal this formula tau is equal to vq divided by i t is the formula that represents the shear stresses longitudinal shear stresses or the transfer shear stresses in a beam and it expresses it in terms of first moment of inertia in terms of the shear force in terms of the moment of inertia and in terms of the thickness of the area element okay now this formula being very very important we need to understand this formula but i believe that this formula can be and we can make students to understand this formula if we went on to solve few numerical problems so hopefully we'll be doing few numerical problems on this formula to understand it more properly and have more insights into this hopefully in the next class thank you for being patient thank you very much